Welcome back. Today we're going over vertical and adjacent angles. To start out, we've got to know a couple of things. The very first thing is that angles are formed when two lines intersect. So down here below you can see that line Y is intersecting line X. So these uh, form angles when they intersect. Now with that, we've got to look at some of these measurements here. You'll notice that when these two lines are intersecting, uh, that these angles are here, angle C and angle A, they both look very similar. And same thing with angle D and angle B. They look very similar on this thing. And so if I look at this information, it wants me to take um, a protractor and measure them. Now, we're not going to go ahead and measure them at this point, but we'll do that at another point. But we want to know something about each of these angles here. And just visually looking at this, we can tell that these angles are identical and those ones are identical. So what do we notice about the measure of the angles? Well, angle A and angle C are congruent or equal. And with a protractor, we would find that those are probably really close to like 60 degrees, which would then make these ones really close to 120 degrees. So we also know that angle B and D are congruent or equal, which then means that we can go ahead and answer our next question is what do we notice about the sum of all four angles if you were to add up all four angles here what would be the total sum of that in degrees well that looks like a full complete circle so that would be a total of 360 degrees as far as some definitions go there are two types of special angles when they're formed uh, when we have two intersecting lines and the picture here will kind of help it explain a couple of things but the very first type of angle pair is a vertical angle and vertical angles they are pairs of opposite angles and they form or they're formed by intersecting lines so an example of this from the picture would be angle A and angle C those are vertical angles they are exactly opposite of one another and same thing angle B and angle D are exactly opposite of one another now if they are vertical angles that means that they are congruent that's a fancy word for meaning they are the same they are equal so if we know they're vertical angles we know that they're identical now in addition to that adjacent angles adjacent angles are two angles that have a common side and a common vertex. Now, in order for them to be adjacent, they have to be next to each other. And if we look at this one down here, um, it, in order for it to be adjacent, this line right here has to be shared by both angles, which that right there, it would be adjacent, but these are not adjacent because they are not sharing the exact same lines. So adjacent ones, for our example up above, would be A and B are adjacent or angle A and angle B, and then also angle C and angle D are adjacent. Now there's other adjacent combinations, but those are just to give you a basic idea. And their relationship, they are supplementary. If they are adjacent when two lines intersect, they will add up to 180 degrees. Right, so if we look at number one, what do we know about these intersecting lines? Well, we've already talked about that, that this value x is not adjacent here and if there's only two lines then it's either adjacent or vertical in this case they are vertical from one another and the nice thing about vertical angles is they are identical so that means that this has to be um, 148 degrees because they are vertical angles number two you'll notice that our degrees here the degrees and x, they are right next to each other. That means that they are adjacent. You see how that purple um, line and the, well, the purple arc and the red arc, they share the exact same ray there. That means that they are adjacent. They're next to each other. And since they are next to each other, we know that their sum is 180. So I can take the three, uh, 35 plus x and equal 180. I then solve by subtracting 35, and I find out that x has to be 145 degrees. In addition to that, 
we're going to go ahead and take our understandings of angle relationships and we're going to set up some equations to find these missing angles. And just starting out, you'll notice that this one right here does not have intersecting lines. So that one does not have um, any vertical angles, but they could be adjacent angles. And if we look at this one, they do share the same ray there. So this angle X and that angle 94 degrees are adjacent and it's not supplementary because it doesn't add up to 180 degrees what it adds up to is the 117 so I would just start out with my equation and say that I know that I have X which I don't know and if I add that to 94 degrees I should get 117 I then solve for X and when I solve for X I get X equals 23 so the value of X is 23 the measure of the angle there, the angle measure, that would be, or measures would be the two angles that we found. We have the 23 degrees and 94 degrees. Number four, same type of thing. These ones are adjacent angles, so we're going to add them together to get this total of 141. So I write my equation 2x plus x equals 141. And you'll notice that both of these have an x, so I need to combine like terms for my first step. And 2x plus x is 3x, and that would give me 3x equals 141. I then divide by 3 to get x equal to 47. So I know that this right here is 47 degrees, and I know that this is 2 times 47 degrees. So instead of uh, putting x there, I'm going to go ahead and put 2 times 47, and I would find out that that's 94. So my angle measures here would be 94 degrees and 47 degrees. Number five, we now have two intersecting lines and those two intersecting lines can form adjacent and vertical angles. We'll see that those two right there, angle three, uh, sorry, angle 3x and angle 20 are exactly opposite of one another. That means they're congruent, so we can just put an equal sign in between there and say they are equal. I then divide by 3 and I find out that x is equal to 6.6 .6 repeating forever. So then I could go back into here and plug in that 6 and times the 3 times 6.6 .6 repeating. And I'm going to get 20. But if you recall again, these are vertical angles. So this has to be identical to what's there. And then the same thing, this has to be identical to what's here. Since they're vertical angles, I know the measure of the, each angle is just 20 degrees. Now, angle relationship, uh, they allow us to determine any unknown angle measure, and then all angles around a point or vertex will always have a sum of 360. So we know that when two lines intersect like this up here, that their angle measures, we can find some missing values based off of what we know, but that the total amount here is always going to equal 360, and half of it will equal 180. We're going to set up and solve for these missing angles here. I'm going to just ignore angle P because it only wants me to find angle um, angle K and angle M. So if I were to start out with angle K, I notice the angle K here from there to there is 180 degrees. Now the reason why I chose this is I know these two degrees, which means I can find this missing one to get 180. To do that, I just go ahead and add all of the sides. So I go ahead and say uh, 60 plus 40 plus K, that is equal to 180. And we've already done this, so I'm not going to walk through those steps, but we would so solve this by adding those together and say that's 100. So how much more would I need to get to 180? Well, 100 plus 80 would get me to 180, so I know that K is equal to 80, degree, 80 degrees. In our second equation, I'm going to go ahead and erase that. I want to know the measure of angle M. Now you'll notice that the line that M is using, and this line right here that M is using, is also shared with this information down here, which means the angle M is equal to the 60 degrees and 40 degrees. So I would go ahead and say that 60 plus 40 is equal to 100. So the measure of angle M is equal to 100 degrees. Next question. 
I want to find angle G and angle J. So angle G right here, I know this amount of degrees and I know that amount of degrees. So I can take that entire line because that's 180 degrees and I can add those three angles together. So I have 32 plus this symbol right here, if you guys recall, that, that means 90 degrees. And then I can add it to G and set it equal to 180. I then combine like terms here and subtract to find out what G has to be. And when I do that, G has to be 58 degrees for this to equal 180. And now that I have that, I can go ahead and do a little bit different approach. If I know this is 58 degrees, then these two are supplementary to one another because they are from 180 degrees. Since they're supplementary to one another, I can go ahead and use that and say that I want to know how many degrees this is. Well, if I, if I go over here and even using vertical angles, this has to be 58 degrees. And so being supplementary, that would be 58 plus J equals 180. And that would give me a grand total of 122 degrees. Number eight, we only have one angle here to find, and this one's a really simple one. It's meant to look really confusing with all the lines, but you'll notice that this line right here, if I were to go all the way over right there, that's a straight angle, which that's 180 degrees. And so these ones, if I were to add them all together, would equal 180. So that would be 29 plus Z plus 112. I combine my like terms here and then subtract it from 180 and that would give me Z equal to 39 degrees. All right, I hope that was helpful for you. If you have any questions, let me know. Have a great day.